Hello and welcome to a very special mini so limited edition episode kind of rare sporadic already too long <laughs> <laughs> okay hello and welcome to the not without my sister mini so i'm rosemary mccabe and i'm beatrice and we're sisters yeah We put out a call a couple of weeks ago on Instagram looking for questions, suggestions of topics or just questions that people wanted to ask us. And we then went through them, decided half of them were never answered. No, Actually, none of, none of them were bad. Do you know that? No, they were all very good, particularly the one that requested my laugh as a ringtone. Oh. But um, we'll get to that later. People I don't want to. People are obsessed your laugh. And I'm we have to. It. Um, it's making me paranoid as well. It's making my laugh super fake. It's making you delighted with yourself. So one of the questions that we picked that we thought we could cover in a short amount of time, because some of the topics were ones we are already thinking about as full hour episodes or 40 minutes, as Rosemary says. So today we thought we'd talk about things that we like about each other. Now, I was a little bit concerned I wouldn't come up with anything, but I think I can probably think of a thing or two. So you can go first, Rosemary. Jesus. <laughs> the precise question was, what do you like most about each other? Oh, okay. So what do I like most about you? Okay, I'll go first. Okay, great. Okay, so what I really like about you, Rosemary, and I realise this is actually... Oh my God, oh no, hang on. I just want to say, you have a face on you like a bitch now. <laughs> no, you I have don't. a face on you like you're I already don't. so amused by no, your own answer. I, was just, I wasn't, I was just more like, I was like, maybe this is more a reflection on me. Okay, so you're right. I'm, it was more that I was like, oh, I get to talk about myself. It was more a reflection on me that I was like, it, it makes me feel good. The things that I like about you is that you make me feel good because, no, because I... What I actually thought was, I love that I can have any discussion with Rosemary. I can say anything I want to her. And we're always friends, right? Now, I don't know if this is always the case. And I'll give you an example of that in a second. But I really was thinking, like, we can talk about anything. We're just very easy going together. We really can say whatever. And then I was like, or is it just that I can say whatever I want to you and you take it? I don't know. Because I mean, remember recently I said to you, like, I get, you know, we were in the car and I said, oh, Rosemary, I sometimes think that when you behave this way, X, Y, and Z, and therefore it means this, and this is my judgment on that situation. And you kind of went, okay. And I was like, is that actually normal to like be kind of assessing your sibling's personality and giving them ongoing critiques and feedbacks oh, yeah, like, yeah, on their personality? I'm not sure it actually is, because I don't know that you do that to me. I mean, I don't know that you're like, Beatrice, yet again, you do say things like, that was really annoying all over again. But you don't kind of go, that thing that you did recently made me think that X, Y, Z. So maybe this is what you mean when like you're saying, that, that, I'm your therapist. That thing that you do makes me think that you X, Y, Z. I think I very you deeply analyze your me. behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and I like it, ascribe it all sorts of meanings to, you know, and, and not so much judgments, but like conclusions. I draw conclusions and inferences and then I say, Rosemary, I think you do this because of this, 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 and you should try to do X instead. But do you think that's because I've gone to therapy and because we've talked about stuff like, you know what I mean? We've talked about stuff like this and I've said, oh, my therapist has said X, and my therapist has said Y, and therefore that has put in your mind like, oh, I wonder what I think. No, you know what I mean? No, oh. no, not at all. It's more that you do it. I think about it and then I tell you what I thought. And I do the same thing to Don. And I do, think I do the same thing to everybody in my life. You just don't tell them. Oh, I totally tell them. Oh, oh yeah, I tell them all. I was like, maybe this is actually not normal. And that's another thing that I thought about recently, which is an aside from this topic, but surprise, everybody will be surprised to hear. I actually thought recently, like, I am now questioning, since we've started doing this podcast and chatting about, like, you know, our family and our upbringing, I am literally questioning everything about our upbringing. I'm like, do other people have outside cats no. I was telling somebody about the budgie that died and dad wanted to put it on top of the Christmas tree and they looked so shocked by this story <laughs> that I was suddenly like oh my god everyone is not like our family well, what about the one where you were saying you went to your therapist god this is poor therapist you, this is like either free advertising I'm not sure good or bad and uh you, you were telling her about the various pets we have lost over the years oh and she God, was like yeah. that, so I was just telling my therapist about how we've had really bad luck with animals we've re, you know we've had quite a few or unfortunate would you instances. say animals have had really bad luck with us yeah with owner, yeah <laughs> and Sorry. like as I listed kind of four or five different pets that we had lost in calamitous circumstances she kind of like stopped talking and, and looked at me very gravely and said and how does that make you feel 
And I was like, I never really thought about it. Don't feel anything about it. Like, I was sad at the time. That was a nice cat. You know what I mean? That I was like, that's not oh, a big deal. Jesus. And she was obviously like, that is a very significant deal. Well, a couple of them were a big deal because like we were very connected to them. But like after a while, I think you also do become detached from the cats that you don't think are going to be there for your entire life. Anyway, mm, all true. that to say that I love about you, our relationship. You love, I love about me that I facilitate yes. your being your best self. I think I had a side career in therapy potentially. And I have allowed you yes, to really to practice on live you. that truth. <laughs> I would say, I love about you here, we, we'll rephrase this. I, if I was giving somebody a review, I'd say, I love that you're so open to feedback. You are so receptive to feedback. I love that about you. And, and that you're so, and even the other day, in the other day's podcast, or in one of our recent podcasts, you said uh, that I had told you that you never used, that you used the phrase, like, my truth. And you were, and you absolutely, were in absolute denial. And then you came back and you were like, well, Beatrice, I spoke to some of my other friends and, you know, they said that that was actually true. And, you know, I, I really have grown and learned from them. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. And I've, I've grown and learned from you is maybe what you actually said. And I love that about you. <sighs> I've grown and learned from you. How much do I owe you for these hours of therapy you've given me? Pro bono. What about absolute the absolute angel. Excuse me. What about the pro bono roof over your head for the entire lockdown? That's, that's an actual thing. This therapy was I did not ask for. Do you think you would be as receptive to this kind of feedback from me? Because now I'm wondering if I, I should yeah, do it out of I'd absolutely love it. I'm always asking... Vindictiveness. I'm always asking people yeah, for feedback. Beatrice, I, I hate to break Except it to you. Except people on the internet. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but it's sometimes this thing that you do is very annoying. What thing? When you go, you know what I've been thinking about you? I know. Well, that's why I said to you, because I'm very self... I try to be very self-aware. I try to be very self-aware. And I said to you, is this okay? Or like, are you? Is this okay with you? And you but were like... Listen, if you say to somebody, is it okay if I give you a bit of... No, like, if it's okay no. If I say this to you, you're like, no, oh, it's No, it wasn't a specific piece of information. I said to you, this way that I, in which I give you feedback. Do you not remember we were in the car? We oh, remember yeah, yeah, we were yeah. going, we, we'd lost our way. We were trying to find a Starbucks. Do you remember we on the way lost to... Our, we'd lost our way to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> on the way to Warsaw, we lost our way. And, uh, and I said, Rosemary, you know, maybe this is not, maybe this isn't okay age, like grown up. It's one thing to say to your teenage sister, you do X, Y, and Z and it annoys me or you could do better or like, I yeah, mean, but is it okay is, to be passing judgment on your personality and telling you ways to be a better person? Not necessarily. I mean, yeah, like the answer is maybe not. But the thing is, once I know that you're even having those thoughts, I want to know them. But do, do, that's you kind know, of why I read bad comments about myself on the internet. Like once I know they're there, I need oh, to Oh no, read no, them. these aren't bad comments. Like no, doesn't it also benefit you? Like doesn't it make you a better person that I point out your inherent flaws and help you work on them? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, this entire conversation is not making it easier for me to come up with something I love about you. Because I'm literally like, what do I like about her? She is a dickhead. <laughs> Well, here's what I was going to say before I changed my mind oh. and decided I don't care about you at all. Okay, what is it? Well, I was going to say that, that I think the thing I like most about you is I make you work hard when you would be procrastinating or watching Dr. Pimple Popper all day if it wasn't for me. Oh, I actually think the thing I like most about you is I don't have to have any of my own thoughts or feelings <laughs> because you can just That's enunciate them for me. Says. Listen, you just, I could just... <laughs> Be a, like a bit player in the movie of your life and you could imagine. I could do this podcast by myself except the other mic's a bit far away. It'd take me a while to jump back and forth. You'd be wrecked. <laughs> I'd be exhausted. Be absolutely wrecked. Imagine. Oh my God, you could be one of those TikTokers that just like changes her hair and has conversations with herself. Have you ever seen those? No, and there'd be also no, there'd be no interruptions that so might be easier to listen she to. She doesn't even listen to me. Have you ever seen those? <laughs> no. Anyway, <laughs> with the, with the, with having this thought. <laughs> No, Rosemary, I haven't. I don't have TikTok. I'm old and no, I like Instagram like, websites. No, but I mean, have you ever seen one of those jokes where it's like a comedian and it splits from them in one outfit to them in another outfit and they're having conversation with two people, but it's themselves playing each person. Do you know what I mean? Like I'll, the parent I'll trap, trap basically. No, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. I'll show it to you now in a minute. I really want this to be over. What I was going to say was... I'm waiting. Oh, the thing I like most about you Somebody, uh, this is about me. Well, I'll start off with a story about me. Oh, yeah, life. exactly. Somebody asked me recently, or I think it was when I was online dating, and somebody said, I'm looking for someone fun. And I remember having a conversation with Claire about it, and I was like, I really don't think I'm fun. And like, I don't think that, you know what? Just <laughs> listen. Listen, try I to react listening. inside I said, your head. I said try not to let your face react. She's literally over there going, you're not fun. I didn't say that. I didn't say, I didn't say a word. You had the face of this. 
She's choking on a rosé now. <laughs> so, I, yeah, and I remember having this conversation where I was like, I really just don't think I'm, like, I don't, I'm not particularly, I don't like to be particularly spontaneous. I think I'm funny, but I don't think I'm particularly fun. But I think you're very fun. It's funny because I think you're funny, but I don't think you're fun. So were you going to say that I make you feel like no. you're funny and that's what you no. like? No, I'm saying I think you're a very fun person, you absolute <laughs> dickhead. So what I'm saying is I know that I'm not fun. However, even though we're very similar people, I actually think you are a very fun person. And I think you're really good fun around your kids. And I think that's a really nice attribute to have that like you like sing songs and you do accents and you're very like gregarious or something like you're very fun in a way that I I wish I could be. Oh my god, I, guarantee and I really you. admire it and I also really enjoy it. And I'm thanks. But Rosemary. at the moment, I'm absolutely well, thanks, Rosemary. That's very nice. You. I guarantee you, though, in years to come, the kids will be listening to this and they'll be like, "Fun? She was never fun. Those she accents like, were woeful." Yeah, just now like when we sang opera by the pool, they did not appreciate it. I was just saying you were fun. Like you used to jump in the pool the whole time and mess around with them. Were being the operative word. Oh well, just today you were like a little bit maybe tired, but also you know what. This whole like quarantining six feet apart thing would exhaust anybody. And trying to keep kids at a pool six feet apart is not fun. It's like the definition of not fun. And you know what else I enjoyed? I think we're a good team because you know what I was thinking? And actually Don was saying this. Don was saying, you know, sometimes like when you have a band, it was like the Beatles, you know, they had the five Beatles and then like one of them dropped out and suddenly it clicked. I was like, you know, when we were doing our jigsaws together, which is what led to our podcasts. <laughs> you like to do the edges and I like to do the middle. And that's good teamwork. I thought you were about to say, I was thinking about the Beatles and you're definitely George or Ringo and I'm oh. Paul or John. No, not at all. You are, you're Paul. I'm Paul. You're Paul. <laughs> I can't believe you're offended by being Paul. <laughs> you're Paul. Hey, John. I thought you were like, you're George or Ringo. No, you're Paul. I'm Paul. Who do you want to be? <laughs> you want to be John. I was going to say, I'm John. Because somebody wants to kill you. <laughs> It's me right now. <laughs> you can be John. You've got those tiny glasses. <laughs> you and know? you stay in bed all day. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody ever likes my uh, boyfriend. Oh. Except everybody likes Brandon. God. Do you know when I went to Cuba? Everybody there's... always likes your boyfriends in fairness, except for one of them. That's true. Because a lot of and we, we, we won't name that. We won't name that one. But nice. he probably knows um, who he is. You know, there's a park in Cuba where they have a statue of John Lennon and they have a pair of glasses on his face that are unfortunately removable and people kept stealing them. So now there is somebody employed full-time by the Cuban government to watch John Lennon's glasses. And this person holds the glasses in their pocket until a tourist comes over and then they put them back on John Lennon's face. Why don't you just, like, they, have they not heard of super glue? And maybe that would ruin the statue, but it's actually the funniest thing. Like, you go over and you look at John Lennon and this person shuffles, you haven't even seen them, they shuffle out of nowhere and hand you the glasses. <laughs> to where? Or to put on John, like. Oh, this is very sit, sit odd. beside him, it's gas. So, I'm fun... And you're great at taking feedback. <laughs> you're fun, and I facilitate your dream of being a psychoanalyst. So that was excellent. <laughs> this was very productive and helpful, and has given plenty of opportunities for people to realise what a great laugh you have. So, you know, I had to say it's not where I thought it was going to go. <laughs> Thank you all for listening to the mini-sode, which has been more jarring, I won't lie, than I thought it was going to be. thought this was going to be more uplifting, but no. I really wasn't expecting to go here. Thanks for listening. Thanks. No, that my sister is produced by Liam Garrity. Sound and original music by Don Kirkland. And original illustration by Lindsay Nielsen. Goodbye. Bye. Not Without My Sister is a member of The Warren, the home of great Irish podcasts. You'll find more great shows at thewarren.ie.